hello and welcome to this short video on educational video production. In previous videos, we've tried to widen the definition of educational video to include different kinds of educational material. We saw that educational video in general relates to a specific course or learning objective, but within that we can have instructional, drama, supplementary video, or even include video as a research tool within our definition of educational video. Now in this video, we want to look at one of these categories in more detail, and this takes us into the work of Larry Cuban. In this book called Teachers and Machines, Cuban looks at the role of educational television from the 1950s to the 1980s. In his examination, he finds three different ways in which educational television has been used. These are the total instructional program, supplemented television instruction, and television as a teaching aid. Now what we want to do is to look at each of these in a little more detail to see what they mean for us. So if we take the first one, Total Instructional Program, Cuban says, Total Instructional Programs are presented by the television teacher. Programs are viewed in small and large classes in which the teacher acts as supervisor. So we can see these definitions useful to us because it relates what the teacher or lecturer does in the classroom and how the video or television component is being used. In this case, the instruction is provided not by the teacher present, but by the television teacher or the teacher on video. Now, we can compare this with the definition of supplementary television that Cuban also gives. He says that supplemented television instruction is where the classroom teacher prepares the class for the video lesson and follows the television teacher's presentation within class discussion and assignments. The bulk of instruction remains in the classroom teacher's hand. So within this description, the teacher or lecturer still has control of the instruction and the video or television is used to supplement what that instruction and its learning objectives are. Now, the third of Cuban's classifications is where the teacher or lecturer uses television as a teaching aid. The classroom teacher controls the content and delivery of the lesson, determining when and under what circumstances the televised lesson is brought into the classroom. Now, Cuban developed these categories at a time when educational television was mostly restricted to broadcast. So how can we bring them more into the present day? Well, if we look at some illustrations of these, we can see that in the first, the instruction is provided entirely by the video or television element. No teacher or lecturer is needed, except perhaps to turn the television, video player, projector, and any other equipment on, so students can actually see the presentation. Now in contrast to this illustration is the second in which video is used as a supplement. In this the teacher or lecturer has to be present to give an introduction, then to play the video, and then to follow up with any discussion or points arising as a result of watching that. So in this use of television or video, there's a key role for the teacher or lecturer to be present in order to control the instruction as Cuban describes. In the third, we still need the teacher or lecturer present, but here we're using shorter kinds of clips. Now, in this application, the teacher or the lecturer is required to give more of a narrative or more of a description to give the context for the use of each clip in their presentation. And in this illustration, we can see that the teacher or lecturer has complete control of how to use the clip and when to use it. Now, we can take these illustrations and update them from television to current day video use. We can see that this can be adapted to be total instructional video, supplemented video instruction, video as a teaching aid, and with present day computer technology, we can extend these to include video within multimedia. Now, Cuban doesn't description of video clips within multimedia because at the time of writing, that technology wasn't available to him. But two authors who have written about video clips within multimedia are Alessi and Trollope. And they write, although people can watch entertainment television for hours, the same is not true of instructional video programs. The length of video depends a lot on its content and how it's used. It's often recommended that video segments in multimedia be limited to 20 to 30 seconds. Now, from this work, we begin to see that educational video can be used in a different number of contexts and in a different number of settings. And it's very useful for us as educational video producers to know something about the context and the use that the clips we're going to try and produce are going to be used in. Now, to this end, there's a number of questions that we can begin to ask. Firstly, we can think about the source of the information or instruction. Will it be entirely from the video, in which case it's a program we need to produce? Or will it be used as a supplement or clip, in which case the teacher or lecturer using it will be able to provide more description and more context? We can also ask who's going to have control of the material. Will it be the teacher or lecturer using this in a classroom setting? 
or will it be used in a distance learning application, in which case the teacher may have no control over how the material is being used. That's purely down to the student. Different kinds of use will require different amounts of work and production activities. Producing a program or a series of programs is going to require a lot more work than producing a number of educational video clips that are going to be used by a lecturer or teacher in a classroom setting. These questions are very useful to us as educational video producers because when we're talking to colleagues about the work we're trying to help them produce, they tell us something about the use and the context and the amount of work and time that we'll each have to put in to create the material they want. The answers to these questions help us with the video production planning process. And it's that process we're going to look at in more detail in the next video in this series.